Okay, so this is the uh, video recording for uh, self-healing topics in our course, uh, Recent Trends of Small Materials. So I believe I have sent the files to all of you uh, through our Moodle system. So um, I need you to watch the video for the uh, summary of what the uh, research has been done okay what research has been done uh, over the years for uh, self-healing material and I will go this to uh, topics self-healing material and how to evaluate so let's go for the self-healing materials so uh, by definition self-healing materials uh, they have the ability to fully or partially recover a functionality that is mediated by operational use. It can be loss as a local loss or a global loss, meaning uh, it can be a whole this whole system, or it can occur locally. Okay, and then I will go through uh, the methods. Okay, what kind of self healing materials that have been developed. And how the mechanism works. Uh, so the first one we call the, the intrinsic self-healing. Okay. Um, so this is the um, the mechanism. So it has um, shape memory in this polymer. It's using the PCL. It's polycaprolactin, and it has a polyurethane system and also the system here. The polyurethane it's it will improve the mechanical property while the the other system will uh, improve the um, the mending ability how to uh, recover the the shape. Okay. So intrinsic self healing means um, if you using the materials and you maybe uh, having a crack in in that material. Uh, and then the material, the bulk material can heal itself. That's what self healing, uh, intrinsic self healing means. Okay, so you don't need any additional uh, materials to heal that material. So by itself, the materials can be self healed. And I think this is one of the ideal uh, self healing process. Okay, it's called the intrinsic self healing. So, uh, the possibility is, um, I think it is possible in, in the polymers, uh, because the polymers we can design how the polymers will behave, how they stretch, how the uh, functional groups, okay? So, yeah, that's, that's the possibility. So, we can control their, uh, the, their uh, self-mending ability. So, uh, the uh, key points here is it can be said as uh, regaining initial property without external input. So, that's the intrinsic self-healing. So, we don't need any stimuli. Uh, so, any crack happen, any damage happen, the material can self-heal by itself. Okay, uh, that's the first one. The interest of self healing, I think that's quite um, simple, not really complicated. And the other uh, example, uh, the other method, I mean, it's the capsule based. Uh, capsule based means we are using a uh, capsule or we encapsulate the uh, the healing agent, okay, inside that. So, inside this, uh, usually, if it is uh, really small, we are saying it's uh, micro capsules. So the healing agent will be released uh, through these uh, capsules. So after the cracking, and the crack also affected the micro capsules, and it made the uh, this healing agent uh, released, and then it will be. Uh, covering the crack 
so it will polymerize and self heal the whole system. Okay, I think it's quite also quite uh, simple, not too complicated. And the third one is the vascular self healing materials. So it's similar to our blood vessels. So uh, it's also using the healing agent, but the difference is they are using a, 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 how to say a micro channel, a microvascular network. Um, in this example, they are using um, woven, like in our uh, textile. Okay, they are using the laminate, uh, composite uh, laminate. So here, the the damage happened. There are uh, one lamination here, one delamination, and then it will release the. Um, the healing agent inside this vascular network and it will be like this and and over the, the, the some periodical of time it will recover and it will uh, uh, making the the lamination here will be covered by the recovery process so this is the self healing cycle and the other example, uh, I think this is uh, similar, but they are using the glass fibers. So similar process. This is the how it looks like, uh, but they are using the electronic glass fabrics. So it's using the uh, microfluidics, I think. Yeah. So using the, at least they have the monomer and also the uh, the other uh, usually curing agent okay that's the uh, the three uh, process or three methods in self-healing that already uh, established so many researchers already developed this tree and by summary in, in summary um, the healing mechanism is uh, simple. So capsule and vascular, uh, it's, it's, it is based on the release of monomers and also sometimes catalysts stored inside the capsules. And then it will uh, polymerize and self-heal the whole system. Okay. And then the interesting self-healing is based on the molecular interactions. Okay. So it's based on the material itself, so it can be a hydrogen bonding, a pi pi interaction, uh, metal ligand coordinations, uh, depends on the uh, molecules or depend on the materials. Uh, based on the healing efficiency, it's actually the self healing, intrinsic self healing is, uh, we can say it is uh, uh, one of the fast healing, uh, it categorized as a fast healing because. The, you don't need any uh, diffusion or any polymerization control in in that process because you directly um, control the materials okay? you don't need to control the polymerization times uh, diffusion okay while in the um, capsule and vascular you need to make sure that you have uh, optimi optimize the time you need to optimize the time and also you need to make sure the reaction between the monomer and then the curing agent okay so here is the uh, some um, graph okay so in the y-axis you will see the healing efficiency in the x-axis you will see the damage volume so in a small scale uh, in a small device uh, or in any device that has uh, or prone to a small crack, okay, uh, like for example, 0 0.01 until maybe less than one millimeter cube, the intrinsic self healing is, I think, the best. Okay, they are fast, uh, and because they are using the interaction, uh, usually hydrogen bonding, 
so it's not really strong bonding but actually very useful because it's really fast the reactions so it can self heal really really fast because the also the damage volume is not too large but if your damage um, quite large so from 1 until 100 these two uh, fast and capsule base is dominated okay uh, mostly people are using the fast killer but in some cases the healing efficiency like in this area uh, between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 and greater than 100 millimeter cubes uh, the capsule base uh, quite good yeah, I think in, in based on on this uh, in this informations, and then we can see based on the f uh, efficiency, uh, this intrinsic is fast healing, while well, vascular and capsule base is slow healing, and I think uh, that's because the diffusion and polymerizations. Yes, it, it takes time and uh, it will making the healing process uh, uh, take longer time. So that's the uh, self-healing material. And then how to evaluate. So, so to evaluate the self-healing, okay, we need to uh, simulate, stimulate the damage to the system okay. and we need to know the behavior of the material uh, we need to monitor the changes uh, when we apply any any uh, simulations like in physical property mechanical property how the how they resist the corrosions and also the conductivity and in physical property I think this is uh, the most used um, techniques uh, dynamic mechanical analysis, differential scanning, calorimetry, etc. 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 So, mostly uh, they are uh, the, the, the how, to, how to evaluate is how to measure the, uh, the property in the system. So, for example, in polymer, you will usually get uh, temperature for uh, changing the phase of the materials. Uh, in, in the polymer, we, we can say it has tem transition temperature or temperature uh, glass temperature. And that's the uh, transition glass or um, maybe some other tax say uh, melting temperature uh, it depends on the polymer types uh, it can be thermoplastic or thermoset for thermoplastic uh, you need to use the melting because you can melt the polymer and then you can use in another shape that for that's for thermoplastic and for thermoset uh, it will be used the other terms for the temperature because you cannot use the uh, the polymer after you are uh, reaching that temperature like in rubber or in wheel in a, in a car's wheel if you burn the wheel then you cannot melt it actually and you cannot uh, mold it and use it in another shape so you get that 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 property, and also like in uh, re uh, magnetic resonance, uh, in FTIR, uh, Raman spectroscopy, you will get the uh, the property for uh, bonding uh, the element. Like for example, this this all this spectroscopy is the, basically uh, the idea is. If you are comparing it to your fingerprint, uh, imagine it's it's acting like like a fingerprint. So you can code the 
decode the, uh, the 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 uh, the unique property of that materials or that polymer. Like uh, you have your fingerprint, right? Uh, it is like a unique ID, right? So we 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 need to uh, check the the identity of that materials. How is the element? How is the uh, the bonding each molecules inside? Uh, we need to check all of that, and by doing that, we can uh, decide whether the materials can go further for more uh, improvement or not. And then, uh, aside from mechanical uh, property, from aside from pro physical property, we have the mechanical property. Um, in this. Uh, picture you can see it's 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 called static damage so static damage is uh, the damage that you apply uh, in a static mode okay so it's not in a dynamic mode so you just put some weight in uh, or you put some strain in in a uh, sample you don't need to add any force uh, additional force external force it will be by the system weight okay and usually we are using the tensile testing uh, tensile testing is um, measuring the stress strain relations and getting the ultimate tensile strength and also Young modulus. Young modulus is the ratio of uh, stress and strain in elastic uh, in elastic behavior. So if, you, if your material have uh, in, in elastic behavior you can get uh, how elastic it can be by looking at its Young modulus. And in this graph, you will see how the material, this black color, uh, meaning it's still uh, pristine, still virgin, meaning it is still fresh, still new. And then the red one, after the first repair, and the second repair, third repair, it will go down here. So we need to know uh, how many cycles we can use the materials and how is the performance okay. it it is uh, actually reduced quite a lot after the first repair like in the second it is reduced half so it's it's quite a lot this gap so that's also a consideration to uh, to 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 make sure the material can at least uh, use for several times and that's why we need to check okay. this is the sample after the tensile and then the other static damage we can use is the uh, bending and compressive loading this is the three point bending we can get the flexural stiffness and we can uh, take the ratio between the heel and the initial and that will be our uh, rest, uh, structural restoration recovery how pers how many percent we can get okay and also we can get the fracture toughness so imagine this is like a crack here uh, fracture toughness is to evaluate um, how the material perform when crack happens how it will uh, stays rigid before the crack propagate and rupture the whole materials so that's a fracture toughness uh, the approach for fracture toughness is by the size of the volume of the crack usually the approach there are sev several approach for uh, crack models, but they are usually using the radius of the crack. So using like a like a 
uh, circle or maybe a cylinder okay so the other mechanical property is the impact so impact um, the damage is a sudden damage so it is a dynamic response of the impacted material uh, impacting material and as well the, the supporting jig so you have the projectile you have the target and this is the springs you put your projectile in a very fast uh, way here you're, imagine you're shooting some bullets hit the target and the target will go here it will have this flasher springs and uh, you will have these transducers for measuring the uh, how fast is this how is the uh, damage okay. so because of the damage volume caused by the impact damage and also it has the multiple failure modes it is actually quite difficult to to predict okay. but um, if we can predict the impact damage and how how fast they are how sudden they are uh, we can prepare our materials Okay, that's the impact and then the other is the corrosion resistance so corrosion resistance uh, if we take looking if we are looking at the metals in nature they are actually exist in oxidized form which means they are they are corroded okay and the uh, the negative parts of the corroded materials is they are lost in their functionality especially the mechanical uh, property it will easily to be broken brittle right and the easy way to protect the metals is by coatings um, in corrosion we have the active protection passive protections uh, depends on uh, on the mechanism active means uh, it will be actively uh, protected passive is just apply the coating and just leave it as as, as it is okay. and also aside from coating uh, we can also monitor the corrosion damage uh, by uh, using the uh, impedance electro uh, spectroscopy so if you see here uh, this is the the uh, some uh, crack and then it has the KCL and then we can measure the potential uh, here so the idea is because the corrosion happens uh, because of one of the reason is because of the electrolyte so corrosion is electrochemical process it needs electrolyte it needs um, different potential and then you can have the corrosion so they are using the KCL so that the chlorine the ions it will getting down here and it will react to the metals and this is the coatings so we can actually measure uh, how long uh, before the uh, coating breaks down and creating a hole here and how long uh, from there how long the corrosion will take okay how long and if we can get the results for example several seconds or several minutes 
those uh, times will essential in designing the coating. So we need to design the coating that can hold for several seconds or minutes before the coating itself can recover. Okay, you get the idea, right? And then the here, this is uh, the impedance. Okay, we can actually uh, monitor the impedance. Okay. So by uh, looking here, we can control the process and the results is we can see the uh, the time and the impedance and we can compare with the other uh, coating so this is the, the coating we can uh, check with the others we can uh, make a conclusion there okay that's also one way and then the electrical conductivity um, this is using the uh, some polymers so self filling material especially in electricity in electrical appliance uh, we need to make sure that if the crack or damage uh, disrupt the conductivity we need to make sure if they are uh, broken and they need to be self healed how about their performance okay, how about their conductivity after the damage okay so we need to make sure that they are still working and we need to make sure they are still uh, working even though it's not really 100% at least they can work maybe 60% or maybe 70% that's already good okay, to make sure uh, they can maintain some time before the total uh, recovery okay, or maybe changing some parts because uh, in, 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 in industry especially if you want to make uh, of, or if you want to maintain the process you need to make sure the process is uh, it can be maintained long enough so that you won't uh, it won't affect you in cost okay so it will be a great deal for uh, electrical conductivity okay so if you can make a self heal meaning uh, you can save a lot of uh, money okay uh, that is the uh, self-healing evaluations and the next session will be the discussion in recent trends uh, what is the development for self-healing the latest development and all of these uh, topics um, I, most of the topics I I got from this uh, paper so in the next next uh, homework or maybe in the future if you need assistance for uh, discussing the topics uh, your homework uh, what you want to do or what you want to emphasize uh, which parts or which materials uh, which process you can try to uh, email me or discuss with me and maybe i can suggest some articles some paper or uh, some website okay okay so this is the recording for the self-healing uh, part one uh, the next part will be uh, will be our live session in class uh, because uh, this part is actually recorded in class before uh, but actually some of the audio files is not really good so I need to uh, record one more time and this is the video recording for that Okay, and yeah I think see you in the next video recording.